I'm just gonna talk at this voice. This is my normal talking voice, even if we're inside. This is it's actually much louder if you're close to me. So I'm just gonna do this. Uh, I'm I'm Bill. I work at a company called Avanon. Avanon is owned by Microsoft. We are like one of the uh, world's best system integrators for Azure. Uh, and I'm gonna talk actually about not about uh, Azure integration, but I'm actually talking about games. But I'm actually gonna talk about it in the context of making games that you can build on Azure. The reason why you might do this, I mean, get, making games is actually very difficult and not very lucrative uh, unless you're in one of the, the top games, but you can learn a lot of skills that are going to be useful in your career, and especially if you are uh, just getting started in building uh, your technical skills and you want to get into a platform, your game, successful or not, you can skip Steam, you can deploy it right into a website, and uh, you can use it as a resume piece to uh, find work deploying things in Azure. What you're seeing here. This is, a, this is a Django website that's hosted in Azure Web Services. Let's see if it's working, yeah. So uh, this is all built uh, out of the MVC model in Django. It's, it's using a, the Graph API as a backend in Cosmos Database, and everything is procedurally generated. So you put in a small number of parameters, it's gonna create the entire universe. And you can see most of these planets are actually kind of very boring. Uh, I'm used, I, my background is in data science, so I didn't wanna learn .NET or uh, Godot or anything like that to do. I just want to use Jupyter Notebook to make my game concept and uh, Django and Azure Web Services allows me to do that without having to uh, use the same skills that I want to use at work. I want to be really good at like manipulating things and things like that. I'm going to go visit this planet for a second. This is all again procedurally generated in this space. This terrain, you're going to see these features in this terrain. Uh, it's a square box. That in the backend service is actually a pandas data frame. And it, as you can imagine, it's a grid of altitudes, which you can then deploy using Babylon JS in real time on the web service. And uh, all of the events, so for example, you click on these are the, uh, the resources that are in the solar system that your population is consuming. That is what you just did there was a real fast Ajax request to fetch data from the graph. Uh, everything is stored in a Gremlin graph in Cosmos DB, which means you can get everything in real fast web time. It's really just a graph getter and setter for those values, which creates, by a fact of that, a simulation platform. I'm gonna show you the, let's look at a couple of these populations. Uh, there's pop things that they can do. Uh, I've got some screen resolution issues on this monitor, uh, but uh, you, can, uh, you can assign people individual tasks. Uh, they then become occupied, and then a service in the back end is going to send an event hub message, uh, which will create a timer trigger, and eventually that job will be resolved, and that population status will be updated. Populations grow, uh, they, they consume resources, the resources dwindle, the population uh, runs out of resources, they starve, and they all die out, very similar to what it's uh, like here on Earth. Uh, they, they, uh, the goal of the game in this simulation is that you have to uh, build infrastructure and tools and keep people from fighting, keep them literate enough they can develop technology to eventually explore space and get out into the larger solar system so they can start getting more resources from this system. It takes place in kind of like a Kardashev zero to Kardashev one kind of range where you're in that space. And you can imagine like the expanse or something like that where most of the late game activity is happening in the inner solar system in a slow time. I'm gonna show you some of the, I've only got a little bit of time, so I'm not gonna go too much into detail about it, but a uh, very, uh, very simple graph system that is just going to go through uh, this is the ontology that's in the graph, so I'm going to take all of this stuff. This is what we would do actually for like a factory simulation or anything like that in, in work. But in this case, I've got planets, I've got uh, the account, I've got the user form, I've got the, the biome, I've got the event, I've got populations, factions, and things like that. And these just interact in asynchronous uh, event hub messages in Azure and the back end as they're running. I'm just going to go into one more part of it. I said like, because the most part of it is I'm too stubborn to work on anything outside of Python because I don't know if I'm gonna make any money from any of this ever. So uh, I wanna be able to do everything in my uh, my regular stack because then at least I can apply for jobs and I can do work for stuff. Uh, and here in this, I'm gonna go into, for example, people. I have all, uh, everything that I develop, uh, all of my dev is work is in Jupyter Notebooks and I can develop the logic of the simulation and get it working how I want it to go. And then uh, when I get into how they're going to for example, how people are going to grow. Uh, I'm going to show you just a couple of lines here. I'm not going to go into too detail about the code, but if we are going for happy hour later, I'd be more than happy to dig into it. 
Um, let's see, see here, I'm importing these from app objects. If anybody knows the Django framework, those are the actual state objects that the live website is also serving. So it's gonna pull in those objects and then you can interact with them now in the notebook in the same way that they act, the website actually runs its code. So now that I've imported them, I can build all of my, here's my queries, it's gonna fetch things from the graph. For example, time. Uh, time is an ongoing uh, uh, Azure timer function. It's just constantly picking and determining whether jobs exist that have been completed. And then I'm gonna go create, for example, these are people. I'm gonna filter them by the number of people who are healthy and wealthy enough that they could produce. I'm gonna create a random number to decide the ones that will produce. And then, um, actually I'm gonna go here into the dev branch for the same thing. This is all on uh, continuous deployment, so if I make a pull request into the main branch, it will automatically go to the live website. I'm gonna go back down here for a second. Uh, people that will grow, random number determines the ones who actually are gonna get the chance to reproduce. And then I can fetch that object, I can build a population object from it. I'm just gonna go right ahead to it. Um, uh, these, this is the dictionary information from the graph that I'm pulling in, just like what this, this is a species. Uh, they consume organics, they, they produce, they effuse organic waste and plastics, like people do. Uh, they, uh, uh, they belong to this faction, and they have a certain number of loyalty to that faction. Then, uh, do the config, so I build an object, you can see, okay, so this is a child, and it is taking from that library, which is actually in the app that I called earlier, builds that population, uses, takes the species as, as an input, and creates a population from that species, and then, creates another object, uploads it to the graph, and now the graph is immediately synchronized. I can test all of this in my Jupyter notebook while it's running, which is, I think, the cool part about this development strategy. So if you like programming in Python, and you wanna use data science tools to make a very complicated game, you can render all of this in your Jupyter notebook, and then you have the benefit that it's going to, uh, you commit it here, and you know it's working, you can even do testing and things like that to confirm it. So if I, if I change something else, I'm worried I'm gonna break something in a very complicated simulation, I can just rerun the population growth notebook and I, I should expect all of these things are gonna happen in the same way. That runs my simulation. Um, from that, I can, uh, uh, if once I update it, it's up it's in the main string and you can go to the main website and you can, uh, let's go back to those, the main page if I can get this in here. Uh, I do, uh, I'll go into it some other point. Uh, I use our AI to actually generate all of the assets and I have an asynchronous process that generates uh, textures for planets, text for things, and things like that, which actually builds that. Uh, so I can take a JSON, which is just the parameters of the object itself, and just the stats of something, give it to ChatGPT and say, can you build me like a, a narrative of this thing, and it'll spit that back, and I put it in a text and feed it back into my application, and say like this text, all the planets you saw, the terrain, uh, the trees, all that's generated through uh, AI tex uh, textures and things like that, through Java and stuff. Thank you very much. That's my presentation. If you get a deal later, I'm going to talk to you about it. Uh, you don't, everybody dies. <laughs> <laughs> so, failure is fine. Nice. All right.